As you all probably know, Venice is very crowded. It's very popular with tourists, but that doesn't mean that you can't find cool places. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Alex, AKA Alex the Vagabond. I'm a filmmaker, photographer, and travel television host. And on my channel, I share with you travel tips, photography and video tips, and life inspiration. So for this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the seven tips that I have to make the most of your next trip to Venice, Italy. Venice is arguably one of the most beautiful and iconic cities in the world, but it's very popular and it's easy to get lost and sucked into the tourist vortex. So if you stick around, hopefully this video will help you avoid some of the pitfalls of Venice and really help you make the most of your time there. If you enjoy the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. Anyways, let's get into it. Tip number one, avoid the crowds. Now with Venice, that's easier said than done, but I would recommend that you visit during the shoulder season. Uh, that's when hotel prices are lower, there's less visitors, and overall, navigating Venice in the shoulder season or in the off season, AKA the fall or the winter, it's gonna be a much more manageable and enjoyable experience. But be forewarned, Venice can get very cold. It's right at the base of the Alps, the largest mountain range in Europe. It is at times prone to icy winds. Uh, it's on the coast, but don't be fooled. It can get very, very cold there. So if you do visit in the shoulder season or in the off season, if you visit during the fall or the winter, just make sure that you pack warm clothes. Okay, a little bit of real talk. Venice is suffering from its own popularity. Not only is the city quite literally sinking, but it's drowning in a tidal wave of tourism. Over tourism is a huge problem in Venice. There's more than 20 million visitors a year with only 55,000 people Venetians living in the old town of Venice. If you are gonna visit Venice, just be aware that over tourism is an issue, so avoid the high season. You're gonna be doing yourself a favor, and you're also gonna be doing the city of Venice and the Venetians a favor as well. So it's a win-win situation. Visit Venice in the off season or in the shoulder season, and you will have a much better time. So speaking about visiting in the off season, last February, I visited Italy with my fiance, Carrie Rad. We started in Rome, road tripped up through Tuscany, and ended our road trip in Venice, catching the last few days of Carnival. So my tip number two is about Carnival. If you're gonna visit Venice for Carnival, this is what you need to know. Carnival in Venice is much more mellow. If you're expecting a giant street party a la Rio or New Orleans, this is not what to expect. It's not like that. The first recorded celebration of Carnival happened in 1162 in Venice. The city's inhabitants gathered in St. Mark's Square to celebrate Venice's victory over the Patriarchy of Aquileia in 1162. The festival became official in the Renaissance, it became famous in the Baroque period, and that's where you get these elaborate costumes. Carnival was an opportunity for the nobility to essentially assume a different identity or become anonymous and do all those things that humans want to do but might not be allowed to do, especially in Catholic Baroque Italy. I think I found my mask. I like it. In 1797, the Holy Roman Emperor Francis II outlawed Carnival in Venice and the festival went underground until 1979 when it was made official again. The culmination of the event is the costume contest and the mask contest called La Machera Puibella or the most beautiful mask. It's judged by international fashion designers. So if you're gonna come visit Venice for Carnival, make sure you get there before Shrove Tuesday. Tip number three, wear 
to stay. Venice has some of the nicest old luxury hotels in the world. So baller, they would empty the wallets of all but the most high of high rollers. Therefore, I suggest you do a little bit of research before you arrive to Venice and you try to find something that doesn't break the budget. When I visited with Carrie, we managed to find a very nice centrally located Airbnb. It was essentially a loft. It had a great cooking setup, a really comfortable queen size bed, uh, a bath, and essentially everything that we needed, including laundry facilities uh, and a nice view. That only cost us around 500 US dollars for, I believe it was four, maybe five nights. So it was quite affordable for what it was. There's plenty of one or two star pensiones, which offer relatively affordable rates. Not to mention there's hostels if you're on a super tight budget. I would suggest going to the app Hotels Tonight or hotels.com. If you're gonna be browsing online, do your browsing in private mode so that the internet does not pick up on the fact that you're trying to visit Venice and subsequently hike the prices of the hotels and accommodation that you're searching for. One last pro tip in regards to accommodation, make sure you are not staying on the ground level or basement level of any buildings in Venice. Why, you might ask? Well, let's take a moment and think. Venice is built on stilts. It's a floating city, which means the ground level is at the sea level. And as Venice continues to sink and is prone to flooding as it is every single year, ground level accommodation, basement accommodation means that it's probably been flooded in the past. It's very damp. It's cold, it's dank, there's probably mold growing in there. If you're gonna book in advance, make sure that you can confirm that your accommodation is not on the ground level. Preferably, you want your accommodation to be at the highest level. And even though it sucks walking up tons of stairs with your luggage, it's definitely better than freezing your butt off and breathing mold. Number four, where to eat. Let's face it. Venice has some of the highest food prices in Italy. So one of the reasons things in Venice are a little bit more expensive is because everything has to be shipped here. Uh, pretty much everything. There is a train line that comes in, but it's mostly for commuters. And you can get in by car, but the vast majority of the food that comes into Venice is brought here by boat. Unfortunately, the food scene in Venice has somewhat of late gone towards catering tourists one-time visitors who will eat something that is blanketly Italian, but is not by any means specifically Venetian. If there's photos of the menu laminated outside of the restaurant, chances are it's not a great restaurant. If it's in St. Mark's Square or a very popular touristy area, don't eat there. The good restaurants are hidden. You're gonna have to do a little bit of reconnaissance. You might have to get lost. Venice's cuisine traditionally was very seafood heavy and that makes sense because it's an island in the Adriatic and they did lots of fishing. Polenta is also quite prevalent in Venetian cuisine, as is the artichoke. So if you visit an osteria, um, a small traditional restaurant, keep your eyes peeled for polenta dishes and artichoke dishes. So if you're trying to save money in Venice, pack a lunch, eat breakfast at home, and eat out in the evening. A few restaurants I visited and enjoyed and can recommend to you were Osteria Anis Stellato in the Sestieri di Canareggio and Gam Gam, a Israeli restaurant with inventive twists on Mediterranean cuisine. Tip five, see the sights, but do not get sucked into the tourist traps. Venice has beautiful buildings from almost every single architectural era dating back to Byzantine times. Venice is essentially a giant open air museum and seeing these buildings costs you nothing, at least from the outside. Most churches require a small donation to see the inside. 
but it's only a couple of euros and it helps preserve that architecture and artwork for the next generation. The main square in Venice is St. Mark's Square. You have St. Mark's Cathedral, which is free to go inside. You also have the Doge's Palace. The Doge was the leader of the Republic of Venice. There's a lot of cool architectural quirks inside of the palace. If you want to see the inside of the Basilica di San Marco, then I highly recommend you go very early, as early as it opens, because it does tend to get quite crowded. You can climb to the top of the tower for a fee. If you're gonna be visiting churches, basilicas, cathedrals, then remember you need to dress appropriately. That means covering your shoulders and your knees. It's a place of religious worship, so respect the traditions, cover up, you'll be fine. For me, the most amazing experience was the morning I woke up before dawn, grabbed my camera, and wandered around Venice and watched the city wake up. There is something truly magical about watching this aquatic city come to life in the morning, just seeing people go about their daily tasks. One of my favorite places to visit and get a bit of perspective on Venice is the Punta della Dogana, which is essentially just opposite the St. Mark's Square. You get a really, really beautiful view of the city and the square and it just kind of gives you a little bit more perspective on what Venice is. It's kind of like going to Brooklyn and getting a view of New York City. Another option is taking a day trip to the surrounding islands of Burano, Murano, or Porcello. These are part of Venice proper but they aren't part of the main island of Venice. They're small islands, they have their own traditions, including glass blowing, and it's kind of a nice alternative to the super crowded center of the city by just taking a day trip out there. You can hop on a water taxi and the journey only takes about 15 minutes. The city of Venice is broken down into six sestieri, 12th century municipal divisions. Check out Dorso Duro, which is the university district. It's got some cheaper eateries, bars, and vintage fashion stores. Dorso Duro also is home to the Peggy Guggenheim Museum. It's a collection of modern art. And the Galleria della Academia, which is home to some Venetian masterpieces. If you're looking for something to read or some cool vintage books, check out the Aqua Alta Bookshop. Tip number six, take a gondola ride. You're probably thinking, you're gonna visit Venice, you have to take a gondola ride, and I would have to agree. I do believe that taking a gondola ride is a quintessential experience when you visit Venice. For all the talk about, you know, going on a gondola ride being expensive, it is expensive, but it really is the best way to get a feel of what Venice is and what it was. But don't be fooled, it's quite expensive. It's 80 euros for a half hour tour. You're not gonna be able to bargain because the gondoliers are actually essentially in a union. If you wanna be a gondolier, you must have passed two tests. The prices are set, the routes are set, there's no room for bargaining or lowballing. So if you're gonna do a gondola trip, then you're going to pay 80 euros for a half an hour. The gondola ride is definitely a splurge activity, but you really do need to do it. And when I went and visited Venice, I was kind of on the fence. I didn't really want to do a gondola ride. Carrie eventually broke me down. Having fun? So much fun. And convinced me to do it, and I'm so happy that she did because it was one of the coolest experiences visiting Venice. Budget travel hack: if you want to do the quintessential Venetian experience of riding on a gondola, be prepared to spend some serious cash. But there is a little-known hack: do as the locals do and use the little gondola ferries from one side of the Grand Canal to the other. They cost two euros if you're not a local, seventy cents if you are, and it's really a good way to get a taste of the quintessential Venetian experience if you're on a budget. Ah, great. Oh, Saving 78 <laughs> euro. I think it's worth it, although we are accompanied by others. Tip number seven, relax. Take it easy. Don't get caught up in the hustle and the bustle. A lot of people visit Venice, they have these expectations of what it's gonna be like. Instagram has done a lot to shape what those expectations are. But like it or not, Venice is very highly visited. It's extremely touristy. 
but that does not mean that you can't have an awesome experience there. So if you follow the tips, if you explore the outskirts of the city, if you take your time to get lost, to be respectful, to open your mind to new experiences, then I do believe that you can have an awesome experience in Venice. Visiting Venice is all about observing a city in a state of perpetual motion and trying to find the fleeting tranquility that still exists here. A visceral reminder of what this place was in the past and why it's so popular in the present. So, parting words, be a respectful traveler, don't yell, don't litter, and just generally be a good person. So those are my seven tips on how to make the most of your time in Venice, Italy. If you have any of your own, please feel free to share them down there in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications if you have not already. And as always, remember, train hard, fail smart, and never give up. See you guys later. Peace.